Hi everyone, I'm Devin Coombe, CPA, and today I'm going to go over the four main accounting assumptions that override and overarch all of our journal entries and financial statements. This includes the going concern, monetary unit, time period, and business entity assumptions. If you want more of these videos, please subscribe. I go over accounting, finance, and just business and entrepreneurship knowledge, so would love to have you join the team. Uh, let's dive straight into it. So if you're looking to be taking the CPA exam or just learning more about accounting education, this is an important video for you to watch. So first assumption, the going concern assumption. This assumption assumes that businesses will indefinitely stay in business. The reason we need this assumption is because if we assume that businesses will go out of business, uh, then we really can't assume that we'll collect all of our accounts receivable, that revenues are all collectible. That's, it, it just makes it so that we can't assume that the company is going to operate at a historical cost principle. There's so many issues if we assume the business is going to go out of business. And going concern is actually a more complicated area of accounting where if a company is considered a going concern, which means that they're considered that they'll go out of business in the next year, within the next year, uh, they have a different method of reporting where they have to act as if their business would be liquidated. So we're generally going to assume that the company's not going to liquidate, it's not going to sell, and it's going to operate indefinitely. The next assumption is the monetary unit assumption, where everything we measure is going to be in dollars, which makes sense from a business perspective, right? At the end of the day, the real objective of a business is to make money. Of course, there's other social benefits, which would are important and great, but from a true accounting capitalist perspective, the whole goal is to make money, so everything is going to be measured in money. We're not going to measure journal entries in time, in units, or anything. Everything is measured in cash, in, in the financial statements, and in the journal entries. So no, first, right? First, businesses will exist indefinitely unless otherwise stated, and we're going to assume for most uh, of our accounting classes that businesses operate indefinitely. If not, we're not in gap accounting anymore. And then the monetary unit assumption, everything is in dollars and cents. And of course, this can mean foreign dollars too, but we'll go into foreign currency translation in the future. Time period assumption means that it makes sense that we can divvy up uh, the periods into months and years. And so generally report financial statements in years, sometimes quarterly financial statements, those are the most common. Sometimes banks and other investors look for monthly financial statements as well. And so this just states that that makes sense, which is kind of an abstraction where it is interesting to think that everything is broken up into year cycles and some companies have greater cycles. Uh, for example, the wine industry might take seven years to grow grapes before they can produce wine. So it might make sense to report on seven year cycles rather than one year cycles. And so just the time period assumption assumes that we can break information up into different time periods, that information being dollar, uh, dollar value information or monetary unit information. And lastly, and I think the most important is the business entity assumption. The business entity assumption assumes that the business is separate than the owner. So if I own Coombs Consulting Inc, that Coombs Consulting Inc. is very different than our, than myself. And so I can have my own assets and that business can have its own assets. And if I give money to my business, that doesn't mean that I have the money, the business has the money that I have a right to. And that's where the equity side of the transaction comes into play. And so this gives the most confusion to business, beginning business owners and accounting students. But it's the most important, right? Know that you are different than your business because your business can bring more owners in, more partners in, and is, is a separate legal entity. And from a legal perspective, certain businesses have are consumed legal persons and have legal liability protection against their owners. So this is key to operating and running business uh, in, in today's time. So make sure you know these four. They're so useful for understanding business. I'm going to go into a question on how you might see this on an exam and help you reinforce your knowledge for this for this topic. So which of the following is, statement is false with regards to gap. A company is assumed to have an indefinite, indefinite operating life. Well, we know this is true. This is the going concern assumption. A going concern means the business is going to continue to be a going concern indefinitely. And so we assume that it will have an indefinite operating life. And so this is a true statement, so this would not be correct. Um, B, journal entries cannot be non-monetary in units and time. That's true, journal entries are always in dollar values, right? That goes into the monetary unit assumption. C, a business owner's transactions are included with its entity's transactions. Uh, so that is not true, right? A business owner's transactions 
are separate from the entity's transactions. And so that since this is false, C is going to be the correct answer for this. And this is the, the business entity assumption. And then lastly, a company can report its information in monthly, quarterly, and yearly periods. Yes, that's the time period assumption. That's the time of period assumption. So we know that each one of these is a way that you could see a question phrased on an exam. And so I've summarized it all here, and we can see C is the correct answer here because the business entity assumption assumes that a business owner's transactions are separate from an entity's transactions, not included with the entity's transactions. We can see more of that in our journal entry videos. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I've included some useful videos related to the owner's transactions, the business entity assumption here, as well as some other journal entry videos. Thank you so much for watching. Looking forward to seeing you around, and uh, feel free to add comments below. Have a great day.